The Middle's Atticus Schaefer talks faith. I need to know the Lord. I need to know where I stand. Yeah. Plus, a family plans one final vacation. We knew next year we might not have him. To a church conference in California. Whatever God has for me, that's what I want. Watch what happens next. Adrian's doctors are saying this cannot be explained medically. On today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, welcome to the show. It's a story you probably didn't see in mainstream news. Earlier this month, some very courageous ex-gays and ex-transgenders marched in the nation's capital to publicly declare the transforming freedom they found in Jesus Christ. The Freedom March founder Jeffrey McCall was a former LGBTQ activist who once lived as a woman named Scarlett. CBN News talked to him and to Louise Ruiz, a survivor of the Pulse nightclub shooting, to find out more. I was actually um, with a couple of friends. It was my birthday weekend. It was last call for alcohol. Um, we hear noises, sort of like firecracker noises. You see people running and screaming everywhere. Um, and my friend that passed away, he actually grabbed me and he pushed me like towards the door, like to run for my life. Everything was going through my mind at that point too. Like I was just like, wow, like, you know, I, c I could die right now. I remember a lady coming up to me and she looked towards Pulse. She lifts up her hands and she starts praying over Pulse. And as she's praying over Paul, she looks back at me and she says, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here. It wasn't a gay to straight thing. It was a loss to save thing. If I fall in love with Christ deeply, that he would do everything else. You fall in love deeply with our Savior, with Jesus, and His love will submerge on you that automatically you'll go out through the day and you'll be like, wow, I'm not doing that anymore, or wow, I'm not doing this anymore, out of the strength of the Holy Spirit. I love the LGBTQ community. I love them with all my heart. If they want to come as a transgender, if they want to come as a homosexual lesbian to the church, come. Come as you are, experience Jesus, then you make the decision. Jesus show, came with grace and truth. You have one side that's just trying to show truth to them, and the other side is just trying to show grace to them, but it's the middle path. The woman he saved from being stoned, he showed her grace first, and he stopped them from murdering her, and then he told her the truth, go and sin no more. That's grace, that's grace, and yes, come as you are. That's what the kingdom of God is all about. He goes out and he brings people in from all over and says, invites them to his banquet, yeah. uh, and it's come as you are. Yeah, one and all. <laughs> well, this summer, a pastor from Ukraine and his team are biking from Los Angeles to Miami to raise support and awareness of the worldwide orphan crisis and to promote adoption. This is the last leg of a global bike ride that's already taken the team over 5,000 miles across Europe and Asia, all to fulfill a dream a dream where every orphan is placed in forever families. Here's how it began.
The team is going to ride 2,600 miles across the United States with scheduled events in 19 cities. They kicked off the tour earlier this month at Saddleback Church, and so far they've crossed the California and Arizona desert, and they're riding across New Mexico right now. Well, the tour will come to an end in Miami on July 27th. Pastor Gennady is with Serving Orphans Worldwide, an Orphans Promise supported organization. I want to encourage you to get involved. They're hosting several single day bike rides that you can join and all are invited to attend their special events along the route. If you'd like more information on where that might be happening near you, go to soww.org. And to keep up with the team's progress, you can follow them on Facebook. He's quite an amazing man. Yeah. You know him, right? I I do know him. He's remarkable. Remarkable. I, you know, one of the things, he didn't say it loudly in our clip there, but what I love about him is when he sees a problem, and for him, his father heart is the orphan problem, he, he says, this isn't the world's problem, this is my problem, and he owns it. Yeah. <laughs> well, he said in the clip, it's not God's problem, it's, yeah, my, it's problem. my problem. And uh, what an attitude to say, yeah. all right, I am God's agent here on yeah. earth, and if I see a problem, that's because he wants me to do Absolutely. something about it. And I love the, you know, let, let's not ever have any orphans. Let's not have orphans in the world. Let's make sure that they're placed in forever families. Yay. Amen. Yay. Amen. Check him out. He's the real deal. Well, ABC's popular sitcom The Middle just wrapped up their ninth and final season. Since the show began, Atticus Schaefer has been making audiences laugh as the quirky character Brick the youngest child in the Heck family. Well, Atticus was born with osteogenesis imperfecta, which is also known as brittle bone disease, a painful genetic disorder that is characterized by easily broken bones. In a recent interview, Atticus shared how his faith has seen him through some tough times. I do no pain. Uh, I do no pain. I've had many fractures in my life, had to recover. I've had plates, screws, you know, rods put in through all my legs. My back is in an S curve because of it. Um, so I, I do no pain. And that's one of the things that I have learned from having OI is it's helped me to be more empathetic and be more compassionate. And really, you get placed in situations where you have to depend on God. And that actually is what led me to make the decision to say, I have to pick my side. I have, to, I have to know the Lord. I have to really know the Lord, not just this generalized knowing of there is a God and he had a son. It's, it's more than that. Is, uh, I was recovering from an injury and it was an injury that was like, I have no clue how I'm going to get out of this. You know, I'm in excruciating pain. I don't know what to do. And then, you know, leaned on him. He, he got me out of that. And in the hospital, watching more Christian television, I wanted, I, I had that yearning spark in me. And then it was, you know, mom, can I read from your Bible? Absolutely here. You know, we'll study it together. So now we do our Bible study together That's and amazing. started going to church. Then I got baptized in 2015. That's a wonderful journey. Yes. Anybody with brittle bone disease knows pain. Uh, and it's wonderful what he's done with that to say, okay, yeah. I need God. I need God just to make it through the day. You know what else is wonderful? I think that programs and commercials are beginning to show people who struggle with certain conditions that not everybody else has and to see them as a significant part of the culture that we live in. Yes. I love that. Yes. I love that. Um, one of my dear friends, Sharon Stone out of England, uh, she's a wonderful prophet, and she grew up with brittle bone mm. disease. Uh, and for her, it taught her how to heal the sick. Wow. She said, I learned how to pray to heal broken bones, the broken bones that were in my body. Boy, that's powerful. Well, almost five million have watched this video of Billy. He's a boy with Down syndrome who plays in the League of Yes, a baseball program for people with special needs. Watch what Billy does after he hits what he called the best home run ever. <laughs>
gotta know, the best you got to know ever. home plate is within your reach when you stop before you get there to do the victory yeah, dance. Yeah, Billy's, Billy's got a victory. A couple That's of dances great. there. That was, wow. Yeah, a whole, whole entourage with him. Yeah, that was awesome. That's wonderful. Go, Billy. Well, coming up, for 11 years, a Norwegian boy struggled to stay alive. His muscles would get weaker and then they would disappear. Through years, we stayed like 80 to 120 days a year in the hospital. See how his tormenting affliction disappeared in an instant. Don't go away, we'll be praying for you. Well, 11-year-old Adrian Nygaard was so sick, doctors encouraged his parents to make some memories with him before he was gone. Well, Adrian was a fan of Bethel music. So the family f flew from Norway to Redding, California to attend a conference at Bethel Church. Well, what happened next is what Pastor Bill Johnson calls one of the three greatest miracles he's ever witnessed. When Adrian was five months and a half, the nurse advised us to start feeding him baby food, just to, to start the transition to solid food and to try out if he could even sleep better. He didn't respond well. He was in a lot of pain. He was screaming all through the night and all through the day. Um, he was sweating profusely. His clothes were soaked and he was spastic from the pain. My husband Thomas and I would take turns comforting him and, and carrying him all through the night. And each one of us could take maximum of, of 30 minutes. Uh, and then we would have to switch. Uh, you try to do everything for him, but you can't take away the pain. When they put him on IV nutrition, within two days he was pain free. And we realized that many of his symptoms were, were related to his digestive system. And through years, we stayed like 80 to 120 days a year in the hospital. He was very sick, so we expected him to die several times. My cries to God were, did you forget us? Are you busy somewhere? I would cry until I had no tears left. And there in the silence afterwards, he would come. We could very much feel his presence. I was upset to God because why? Why should I get a sick son and, uh, and so sick? Of course I was crying out to God and shouting to him. Uh, I think God is big enough to take my expression. His muscles would get weaker and then they would disappear. So he had some kind of progressive muscular disease, although we didn't know what caused it. He had epilepsy, he had tachycardia, he had a lot of problems that caused him to grow very, very weak. And at the age of 11, our doctor said, you've talked about going on a trip, just creating memories for you as a family to live on after he's gone. Now is your window of opportunity. Next year, he probably won't be able to and we knew next year we might not have him. We couldn't go to the, to the beach because of Adrian. We couldn't play in the sand. We couldn't go to a Disney park because he was too weak to go to everything and he just had to look at them and that was not fun for him. And we thought, well, we'd like to go to a conference, like a church conference. And that might sound weird, but we had never been able to go anywhere. But we thought, so what if we go to Bethel Church? Our kids just love their music. When we got to Bethel, Adrian leaned over and he said to me, Mom, now I know that whatever God has for me, that's what I want. I know He wants the best for me. And that was just great. Um, and then we went to a, a breakout session on, on healing. And at the end, they said, does anyone need a miracle? And he raised his hand and a young man stood next to Adrian. And he said, so what's wrong with you? And Adrian said, I can't eat. And he just prayed for Adrian, praying for new life in his stomach and, and his digestive system. And, and off we went. And I asked Adrian, 
so did you sense anything? Did you feel any different? And I said, no, but it was a good experience. So for lunch, we went to a restaurant nearby because we, we just needed to eat before the next session. And we all ordered and Adrian said, can I have the breadstick to play with? And usually at home, we would always give him food on this plate for him to, to cut to pieces and to smell and just to be a part of the meal, basically. And all of a sudden, Adrian said, can I have another one? And we said, no, you already have one. And he said, not anymore. Yeah, I just ate it. I, it just happened. I have no idea why. I have no idea how it tasted. I don't remember. All I remember is my dad looked on his face when I told him. He was shocked and a little bit terrified. Will he be sick or is it get healed or how will this go? Just tiny, tiny amounts of watermelon that contains a lot of water was enough to, to make him very sick. So just the idea of him eating a breadstick, it was like... It was... It was unimaginable. So my husband and I started talking. Now what do we do? Do we take him to a hospital? And we thought, no, there's, it's no use. They don't know him here, you know? It's just too complicated to begin to explain everything. And we thought, well, we'll just have to observe. And he went to bed and everything was normal and we recognized something was different, but we didn't know what. The next morning, I tiptoed into his room to see if he was still alive. And I, I looked over in his bed, and Thomas came and stood next to me. And there he was, sleeping, rosy-cheeked, and, and he was just fine. I woke up with my mom over me, and I asked, when is breakfast? And it was just amazing. His healing didn't come with a manual. We didn't know how to do this. But honestly, we just couldn't stop him. <laughs> he would eat everything. He would have burgers and fries and salads and, and pizzas and, and ice cream and everything. You know, it was just impossible to stop him. I had 12 years to catch up on. Within days from when he was healed, the muscles started growing back. He was changing right before our very eyes. When we came back to Norway, Adrian's doctors are saying, this cannot be explained medically. His physiotherapist says, this is a miracle from God. It just can't be anything else. It's a very strange feelings. When you have been through so many years, we're expecting him, he could die. And now he has the possibility to, to grow up, to get a family and to get, everything is possible for him now. That is amazing. I remember the very moment I was in a car and and I realized that Adrian would have a future. And he had been healed for quite some time, but it, it just hit me that he will have a future. And I was just so grateful. You know, all those prayers that we th prayed throughout Adrian's life and his, his illness, I firmly believe that those kept him alive. He wasn't healed, but God kept him in his hand. I believe in the power of prayer and I believe in the power of God. I think nothing is impossible for God. Healing is on the Lord's heart. You know, that is, it is who He is. He's the creator, the life giver, the healer. I used to think that I know that God can heal, but I don't know if He wants to. And now I know He wants to. And you can know that too. He wants to. Jesus died so that you could be healed. It's by his stripes we are healed. That's what the Bible says. He himself has borne our infirmity, has taken away our pain. If he's borne it, well, then we don't have to bear it any longer. It doesn't belong in our bodies any longer. All we have to do is see that, believe that, receive that. He's already done all the work. You don't have to bargain with him. You don't have to beg him. You don't have to plead. All you have to do is believe. So Terry and I are going to pray right now. 
and you join with us. And the Bible has this great verse, when two or more touch anything, touch anything, it shall be done for them. All we have to believe, do is believe and then touch. So in an act of faith, reach out your hand and touch that area of the body that needs healing. If it's something throughout your body, just touch the top of your head. If there are people around you, ask them to come lay hands on you right now. And we'll agree, touching it, and it shall be done by our Father in heaven. Let's pray. Lord, we just lift the needs to you right now. And as people in an act of faith are laying their hand on that area of the body, we just say to them, be healed now. Kingdom of God, come to them. Will of God be done in their bodies now. And we look to you on the cross. We see your stripes. We see your wounds. And we say, those wounds are for me. They are for me. For by your stripes, I am healed. So we receive that right now. We receive it into our bodies and we declare, be healed now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. There's someone you've got recurring lung infections and it's remarkably painful right now in your right lung. God has just healed you. And as I said, right lung, the pain just left you. Take a deep breath and you've had recurring problems. You're not ever going to have problems again. Your lungs have been completely restored. They have been made new. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Someone else was scarring in your esophagus. I believe it's related to acid reflux. And God is healing and restoring and, res and, and giving you normal swallow, uh, normal digestion. You don't have to worry about it coming back up. Uh, in Jesus' name, be healed be made whole. Someone else with a deteriorating bone disease in your face and you're having bone loss in your face. God's healing you. Uh, he's restoring it. You've got loose teeth. Or you've got a, a wide variety of problems from this. God's healing, taking care of it, restoring bone. He's, he's putting it all back together. Just receive it now. In Jesus' name. Terry? Someone else, your immune system has been compromised in some way, and it's created all kinds of issues for you with uh, really incurable scenarios, but not today. God is healing you. You're going to be restored completely and wholly. Your immunity has been restored. Your body is going to begin to function as usual. You are going to be almost startled by the circumstances as God heals you in Jesus' name. Uh, someone, you've had an impact injury to the right side of your rib cage, and you've got broken, cracked ribs. Uh, God's healing that, taking all that pain away. Uh, even that nerve pain, that irritated nerve, all of that is leaving you right now mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. And someone else, you've had crippling arthritis that's actually damaged the shape of your hands because of it. But today you're mm -hmm. being set free. Just stretch your hand open and, and keep your hand open as you receive what God is doing for you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We receive it now in your name. Amen. amen and amen. If you've been healed, let us know. Share your testimony. Give us a call. 1-800-700-7000. If you need prayer, we're here for you. All you have to do is call us. Terry? Well, it's Memorial Day, and we want to remember those who've made the ultimate sacrifice to say thank you to all our exceptional members of the military serving today. I want to give a shout out to a special couple we recently met. Adam and Cassie, they're a military family who wanted to be debt free, but soon their car needed repairs, bills came due. The only way they could pay for everything was to put it on a credit card. But thanks to helping the home front, they didn't have to spend a dime. Second class petty officer Adam is a welder for the US Navy. He enjoys opportunities to teach his kids about his job. His wife, Cassie, loves his enthusiasm. I'm really proud of him. Proud that he's good at his job and that other people look up to him and respect him. 
When they started a family, they agreed Cassie would leave her full-time job and stay at home, but still continue taking college courses part-time. Losing her paycheck was harder than expected. Cassie's tuition was growing faster than they could pay it. We're one income and we're a family of five, and it's hard to find room in our budget to become debt-free. Finances got even tighter when they had to fix the brakes on their van in the same month they needed new tires. Then Cassie's stepmom was diagnosed with cancer and asked if they would come visit before her treatment started. The only way to pay for the trip was with a credit card. She wanted to see her grandchildren, and so we made that decision to go up there. And it was in the back of my mind, you know, this is, we don't have money for this. When Adam and Cassie's church, Grace Bible, heard the couple was having a financial setback, they asked CBN's Helping the Homefront to get involved. Pastor Neil McCullis came by to deliver some welcome news. CBN wants to help you to continue to get out of debt. Neil told the couple CBN was paying for the brakes, the tires, and the balance of Cassie's tuition. Like, I can't process that right now. But that's not all. You know, you just had a significant expense to go see your stepmom. Another couple thousand dollars to go do that, and they want to pay for that. I just feel like it's, it's such a blessing. You know, we don't do anything to deserve that. That love that he gives us. A lot of words, as I've been most of the day, but even more now. This military family can now concentrate on building savings for a secure future. Thank you to Help and Homefront. It's just a great thing that you guys do. It is a great thing that you guys do because that happens because 700 Club members care enough to reach out to the needs of others. You can do that right now by calling our toll-free number 1-800-700-7000. Listen, helping the home front designate your gift to that because it's touching the lives of those who are serving for all of us. Gordon? All right, here's a word for you from Hebrews chapter 13, it's verse 17. And don't forget to do good and to share with those in need. These are the sacrifices that please God. And what a wonderful verse to live by. Realize that he's pleased with what you do for other people. The most spiritual thing you can do is to help someone else. God bless you. We'll see you again.